Hello, this is Daedalus with Nerds and Stuff, and today we'll be taking this Reaper Bone Stone Giant from this to this. Let's get started. So I'm going to start out this model like I normally do by painting the eyes. Except, instead of using white to make the eyeball, I'm actually using game color of ghost gray. Now I wanted to use the gray instead because I, when I was trying to figure out kind of how to do the face uh, for the stone giant, I, I kept finding different artwork that would depict two things. Either, you know, A, a just solid kind of milky gray-white eye, or B, one that's more traditional but just kind of gray with a pupil. So I decided I would just go with the kind of the, the regular eyeball because I had a lot of eye to work with. So I didn't want it to look weird just kind of being these empty set eyes. So right now I'm just kind of cleaning up. I, I get to skip a few steps fortunately because the model is going to be darker grays and blacks. I don't quite get away with doing the same style of eye outline I typically do because honestly it wouldn't be seen. Uh, when black's your flesh tone, at least uh, this true black, not like, uh, let's say, African skin, um, you can't really do that outline. As you may have noticed, I have since picked up a painting vise. I'm hoping that they will be able to make these videos a little bit easier to consume. Um, I noticed in our last one we had some weird technical difficulties that didn't really show up until we were in post-processing. And so I'm hoping that this vise will help kind of settle the camera so we don't run into those same issues anymore. So we're just going to start with the flesh tone. Um, you know. The majority of this video is just going to be building up the gradual flesh tone. It's, there's a lot to work with. This mus model's got a lot of good muscle tone and definition. So I really wanted to spend the time and make it look really nice. So I'm right now just kind of painting black with a little bit of just a touch of ghost gray in. Ghost gray is a very high pigment concentration paint. And so a little bit goes a really long ways when trying to mix up grays for black. At least it's a lot better, or we'll say a lot higher concentration than a lot of other grays I've used lately. So I found that, you know, just the same kind of proportions for mixing I was doing before don't quite cut it anymore. So I wanted to paint this model. I've, I've you know, got a, quite a collection of stuff I haven't painted, but... Uh, Wizards of the Coast has released a new module for 5th edition D&D called Storm King's Thunder. And I'm really excited about it. I've uh, got a copy that should be showing up soon. Um, it's kind of about, like, giants going just bananas in the Sword Coast, if you know anything about that. And giants are a race that a lot of modules don't tend to touch on, that in most D&D campaigns don't really get seen. So I'm really excited about this module. It's really kind of a cool thing. I, I also really kind of like the, the Norse legends and lore. I'm seeing the Norse mythology. And kind of the giants, through their different iterations, tend to be the closest embodiment of that that you get in like a real D&D setting. And by real, I just mean something that's, uh, we'll say like a wizard-sponsored product. I know there's rules and everything to make your own pantheon and you know you could do that uh, but this is the first one that really kind of outlines a little bit of that same lore i also backed the reaper bones 3 kickstarter which hopefully knock on wood should be coming in the next month or so and there should be a number of giants in that group and uh with that i'll i will be doing an unboxing video when it does arrive and you can see all the different giants I've picked up. Pretty much if there were any giants at all in any of the stretch goals, I, I grabbed them. I don't know why, but giants just kind of fascinate me. That and the models look really nice, and painting big stuff is fun. You don't get to do it very often. Most of your stuff's, you know, 28 mil, 25 mil, small heroic. But when you get a big giant in front of you, you can really sit down and kind of spend a lot of time making it look nice even though it might be a simple sculpt. I mean, in all honesty, this particular model, the, the Bones 2, I believe, Stone Giant, is a very simple sculpt. He's basically just, you know, human anatomy and this 
kind of layered kilt between some kind of skin and like a, like a, a it's like a metal plate armor, but it's not like overlapping plates. It's kind of like stitched plates. But apart from that, it's just it's a very basic model, and so this is one of those things where if you take your time, you can kind of paint in a lot more detail than is present. Even though it's there, if you were to just kind of take the quick highlighting approach, you know, just like three or four layers and maybe washing it down, you'll end up missing out on a lot of good detail because if you were to do that quick highlighting with all these different muscle groups, the model would just look strange. Uh, you know, in my opinion, and maybe, maybe you've done it all and it, it looks great. If so, uh, you know, send me pictures. I'd love to see them. You can hit me up on Twitter uh, or here in the comments. I'm just full of crap. Uh, show me. You know, I'd love to be proven wrong. Um, I always, you know, love to see other people's art to begin with. And, you know, if it teaches me something, then that's even better. I always love to learn. So I always kind of struggle with heads. Uh, I never know, especially bald heads, at least when they have hair, um, you've got a little bit of detail to highlight. But when it's bald like this, I never know what to do to make the skin tone look natural. Because, you know, if you try and do a, just like a layered approach like you would with most other muscle groups, you still get a weird look because then he just has like lines going up the side of his head. No matter, unless you spend a lot of time like wet blending it or something, which is a technique I am not very good at. Um, even just using my layering technique, you end up building a ton of coats to get away from that. So I, I have kind of come up with a rough method. It seems to work. Um, you'll see it a lot easier when we hit lighter coats. But right now for this darker one, uh, we're just trying to get some paint on the model so we have a little bit of definition between it and the primer black. I should also mention that I did just prime this model straight black, as most of you are aware, if you've ever purchased a Reaper Bone before. Uh, they do not come in black plastic, they come in white PVC. Um, this model I did try to paint when I was Twitch streaming a long time ago, and I just couldn't get the skin tone the way I liked and got rushed with it, and so I, I stripped it actually. Uh, just let it soak in simple green for three or four days, and uh, all that paint I put on just peeled right off. But if you've ever stripped a model before, you know that you don't get it all. Some of it stains the plastic, especially on these. You know, with metal ones, you can usually get most of it off, especially if you step up from simple green to like uh, acetone or something, you'll get most of that paint off. So I, I wanted to do the preview with a uniform look, as opposed to kind of this splotch streaked black. <laughs> it might just look a little jarring, you know, whether it be bare metal or um, kind of natural plastic. Um, I, I do try and keep them nice and clean, so you get that nice before and after crisp look to them. So yeah, we're just kind of going through and hitting muscle groups, just building up layers. And I'm kind of progressively with more layers, just cutting in a little bit more of this ghost gray. Just uh, slow and steady. And when it comes to the muscle groups, um, I'm trying to be gentle with the brush and not go into kind of the crevices. So that when I do wash it, it's not reliant on that to put in the shadows. Because I do want to maintain that blacker, or the, the deeper black tone in there. Um, I am using a new brush today actually. Uh, a local Hobby Lobby just opened near me and so I was cruising through during their grand opening seeing what awesome stuff I could pick up and I found that they actually carry a Windsor and Newton line. So I got a Windsor and Newton Cotman size 0. Now this isn't the Series 7 that everybody proclaims is the best brush God ever made, or whatever. This is just a, a Winsor & Newton um, natural hair watercolor brush. And I, it did alright. You know, this was the first paint with it, so it did really well for that. But we'll see how it does when I, I kind of abuse it some more. I tend to be a little rough on my brushes, uh, not by choice, it's just kind of my painting style. 
I tend to work them pretty hard because I kind of just use the brush for whatever I happen to be needing it for as opposed to switching to rougher brushes for rougher techniques. Uh, so hopefully it'll hold up. Um, it was nice though. It's got nice long ferrule to it so it soaks up a lot of paint so that I didn't have to keep going back to the palette as often. I mean, I don't have to go back very often with my normal liner brush, but this was a nice one. Hopefully it'll be a good addition. I was able to actually paint most of this model using that brush, especially on the skin tone. It has a fine enough point to be able to hit the, the real delicate muscles, like on the sides of his ribs, and kind of like his neck, or his chin straps. I think that's what they called him, coming off the side of the neck there. Um, but anyway, it was nice enough to get those while also doing coverage over wide areas like biceps and calves and his pecs. Also his dome, you know, dealing with the top of that head. I also found that it kept a fine enough point to be able to trace, like, what would be uh, tendons on the hands and feet to kind of uh, lay those out. Um, I wasn't thinking it would, because every time I'd load it up, it would kind of bulk. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. As I continued to use it, it would kind of hold its point, so I was able to do those fine details. As long as I didn't get too handsy with the brush. If I applied too much pressure, it kind of flattened out a little bit and it didn't kind of spring and hold like uh, some of my other natural hair brushes do. Uh, it seemed to give a little bit more, and that could just be that it's a water brush, a, excuse me, a watercolor brush instead of an acrylic brush like my other natural ones are. Um, but unfortunately they didn't have a uh, Windsor Newton acrylic line. It's kind of disappointing. I could probably talk to them and see if they'd order it, but at that point, I might as well just hit Amazon. If your local store literally does not carry something, and honestly, this is a Hobby Lobby, so this is a big box, not a local store at all, um, there's only so much you can do. You know, if it's a game store thing, go for it. Definitely, even if you got to pay a little bit more, especially if you frequent that game store. You know, that's that's something you should do to support them. I know in my area I've only got one, and every time somebody tries to open another one, they just can't stay alive. So, you know, I try and support that one. Fortunately, I'm into the war machine, so they bleed me dry that way. Uh, you know, this lovely plastic crack addiction we modelers tend to have uh, tends to help us support our local stores. But yeah, with a Hobby Lobby, I'm not worried about it. They're a big store. Um, unfortunately, they're probably going to put out the only model train store we've got in town, but those guys are, they've been on the decline for the last eight or nine years anyway. Uh, that hobby's kind of just fallen out too, unfortunately, which really sucks because that's where I get most of my basing ideas, is from old, like, model railroading magazines and stuff. So I'd hope by now that enough coats are going down that you can begin to see some of the distinction that's building up between the flesh tones. Um, I've just continuously been cutting in more of the ghost gray, doing additional layers, just kind of doing these slow glaze builds that I'm streaking out the tendons and the feet like I was talking about. And I am going to bring this one up fairly bright. Um, brighter than I initially thought, and then I actually ended up washing it down darker than I initially thought. So we're just hitting some more of those muscle groups and kind of taking a more dramatic step now. I built up a good dark gray tone. Now I need to start doing some of these more extreme highlights so that I don't end up putting, you know, 30 layers of paint down to try and get to the same level. There's taking your time and there's wasting your time. And unfortunately, I have a lot of other things that I'd like to paint. Well, not unfortunately, I don't feel bad about that. Because I've got a lot of cool models. This is among them. I've, I've been sitting on this giant for a while now. Because I, I bought him because I wanted to practice skin tones. I was like, this will be a great practice piece. I mean, just look at all these muscle groups, this anatomy he's showcasing. You know, this will be a fantastic learning opportunity. 
And then I waited like six months to first try to paint him, and then well, here we are like another four or five months later, so it might almost be a year since I bought this guy. <laughs> really getting dramatic now, and I'm starting to not just hit all the, we'll say like all the visible areas, but just the ones that would be more of your extreme or highlights. I'm still going to be building up those extreme highlights, so don't worry, but we're definitely getting a little more dramatic. And as such, um, I want to start narrowing those highlights down. I will say his hands are kind of sculpted a little weird. His right hand has got thumb overlay across two of the fingers, and his left hand has got um, almost like a rotational bias to it. The fingers aren't quite shaped like they should be. And I know that sounds really weird. Um, it sounds weird saying it. It makes me sound like I'm crazy. But uh, when you're painting it and really getting down to it and trying to figure out like where fingernails are or like you know where the knuckles are and things for highlighting, uh, you start to notice these things because you're just like, you know, where where are they? With those fingers, especially the thumb, uh, it seems as though it's rotated about 45 degrees out of phase. If that makes sense. Uh, that'll make sense to some of you, but what I mean is that if you look at your thumb, you kind of have a squared off oval for a shape. At least I do. I've got these pudgy fingers. And your thumbnail kind of goes across the top side of that squared off oval. Now imagine if you rotated your thumb about 45 degrees, or, you know, roughly an eighth of a turn, if you were rotating it. And now imagine it's squared off, like it was before, but this is your thumb's orientation. That's kind of what we've got going on with that left hand. And I, it, it's just kind of odd. You know, it, definitely a little strange. I don't know if maybe something got twisted when they casted the initial, you know, when they made the mold, and maybe the, you know, the... the sculpted piece kind of twisted a little or something, but something's just not quite right. So yeah, still just doing those highlights. Um, trying to hit all these raised areas that are really pronounced. You know, getting his jaw bones and kind of the sides of his mouth and um, kind of all these nice details that are on the head. Things that I want to really stand out. And now to kind of touch on this head technique. So it's not fancy. I basically just load up the brush and just kind of mash it onto the top of the head. Uh, it's just as dirty as it sounds. I'll literally just kind of taking it and just forcing it down so the bristles kind of scatter. And I found that by doing that, you kind of get a rough kind of uh, splatter texture almost building up to the top of the, the head. And then at the top of the head, you definitely have the full bright color that you would be looking for on a like a progressive highlight. So it's dirty, but it works. It looks nice. I found that it it ends up looking a lot better than when I tried to do a series of layers building it up, because even then I usually end up mixing up my layers or we'll say getting too greedy with some so that I end up overlapping others and then it it doesn't build that smooth transition, and you end up seeing the layers and like the, the steps going up his head like some kind of geological cross-section. This way I found it may be a little overly dramatic um, as far as like a traditional highlights concerned, but I think it looks a lot better. At least with my painting style. You know, your mileage may vary, as always. And if you use a different style, let me know. You know, maybe you've got something better. I by no means feel like I have the the best techniques out here. You know, I've only been mini painting for about two years now. But I, you know, I found that when I started into it, I really kind of took to it. I ended up consuming just a ton of media and tutorials and learning and stuff. And so the whole reason why I'm kind of doing it on this channel is so that I can share that knowledge that I gathered from all these different sources in one place. And so if you've got more knowledge, you know, better ideas, different techniques that maybe produce better effects, you know, I'm more than willing to add them to my arsenal. 
So just, I've cut in more ghost gray now, and if you notice, it's really starting to get bright. A lot brighter from where we started. Still just hitting those extreme highlights, really just getting the, the really bright edges now. Because we're stepping up quickly, and just kind of tracing those same lines I've been doing for the tendons, and uh, just doing just touches now. Because I don't want to be leaving too much behind, or else this guy's just going to have, like, gray skin. Not layered black skin. But I will say, it is kind of hard to remember to hit all the anatomy, as I'm sure you guys are pointing out or seeing that I, I seem to miss a lot of hit places and come back and touch them up on the next layer. As uh, Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely do that. Especially on pieces like this, where there's a ton of these skin layers to go on. It's really easy to miss a muscle. But fortunately, when you're doing these layered highlighting, and this like layered glaze highlighting style, you can come back and just catch it on the next one, and usually you're okay. There I am just doing the same mash down on his head again. And just another layer of extreme highlights, just picking out and defining some stuff on his knees and legs and on his feet. Kind of back of the calves now, and the same coats I've been doing all, all video. A lot of definition's been painted in. There's some really dramatic differences between like his calves and his shins, kind of the lighter and dark areas, and I wanted that dramatic facing. Now we're into like the very last full coat, and this is just very just like edges. So I'm not doing like full surfaces, this is just stuff that light is hitting, and stuff that's really standing out. Uh, unfortunately I got his feet off screen, so you can't see the tendon work I'm doing, but I promise that's what I'm doing. Just lining up those tendons, making sure they'll stand out a lot. Not doing nearly as much as I have in the other coats. Still just picking out those little muscles. Just doing right on the edges there on his pecs, or his abs, excuse me. And I always struggle coming into the pecs. And I don't know why, it's just because of how they usually are sculpted coming up towards the shoulders, I always have a hard time picking out exactly where to kind of stop the layering to make them really well detailed. You can see I'm only doing about the bottom half of the pec. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive because the top half would technically be lit better. But I've found that by doing the bottom half, you tend to make them stand out more so they look more defined. And that's kind of a, like, uh, a look I like better. So, you know, find something you like and stick to it. So just getting the last of the edges. Um, a lot of muscle groups here. Lining the, the tendons on the hand. And at this point, we are probably something like, uh, probably 40% pure black and 60% ghost gray, I would say. With how bright the ghost gray is, um, we're definitely getting up there. And this skin is just looking great. You can see all these details and it stands out. It's really well pronounced and highlighted. You know, you can make out these muscle groups. He's starting to look scary. Kind of like he might actually do some terrible things to small adventures that are, you know, a third his size. And just doing his other hand now. Same thing. Just tracing those tendons in the hands and getting fingers. Um, I'm not worrying too much about getting his dome. I am doing a little bit right on top, um, but I don't want to go too far down because this is like the last full uh, layer I'm doing. And now we're just going to do ultra extreme highlights. So these are just the edges of the muscles, the very lightest groups. And these are the ones that really stand out. These really define where the muscles are. And I don't do it everywhere, I just do it on the really extreme highlights. I, I, or the, excuse me, the really extreme edges. 
I do it on the pecs, even though the pecs and abs, even though they technically wouldn't have it by lighting, because I find that it makes them stand out a lot. Um, it gives them really good definition. Um, otherwise, they would just kind of be on the face and probably the fingers on this model due to... Uh, I always take an upward lighting source, uh, so Zenital or Zenithal, however it's pronounced. Um, I always use Zenital because that seems to be uh, the pronunciation I like. So now we're just washing. And this is a one-to-one -one thinned mix of Nuln oil. Um, you could have, if you're painting along, you could leave him as is, but I felt he was too bright. And especially compared to some parts of the skin that didn't get any paint, that were still just straight black, uh, there was a very dramatic contrast between those areas. So I wanted to kind of bring it in line, tone it down, uh, wash everything so that everything kind of meshed together better. I I've talked about it before, but when you have these similar things you highlight to when you wash them after you're done, it really brings the color all in together because it brings out the similar pigments across the different layers. And it's not quite as important with black because everything has black in it, technically, white and black. That's why you can always get away with uh, washing an entire model black, for instance, instead of doing dedicated washes uh, for different areas. Uh, that's a technique I used for a long time, until I realized things looked better using washes that were specific for regions. Uh, but this really kind of brings in the color and tones it all down. So now I'm just putting a layer of shield brown down on kind of all of the parts that make up his kilt, you might call it, kind of a skirt. Uh, he's got the this plate metal we talked about earlier and kind of this uh, pelt, this fur, this uh, animal skin, and a bunch of little like dangly things. So I just figured I'd paint them brown, and most things I can step up from brown into other tones, um, but I did want to go with non-silver metallics on this model. I paint a lot of silver and a lot of the other stuff I do, and so I don't get to use my golds and bronzes as much. So I wanted to be able to showcase them. Um, I've got the paint, so I might as well, right? So I was running into some trouble uh, with this fur. The combination of the watercolor brush and the way I thinned the paint was giving me some grief. Uh, I kept getting a lot of bubbles up on the fur. I'm not quite sure what it was. I may have thinned it too much, or I may have just been painting too aggressively. Um, but I was getting crazy bubbles. And so I upgraded to a little uh, less careful brush just to kind of get paint down. And I didn't have that bubble problem. Or if I did, it was just obscured by a lot of extra paint. <laughs> uh, either are equally likely. So once I got the bulk of the paint down, I came back with the nice detail brush uh, so that I could stop kind of coloring with a giant magic marker and start being a little more precise. Uh, I definitely, definitely really, really did not want to mess up that skin. You know, I just spent a lot of time making it. I was really happy with where it ended up. It looks great. Um, I don't want to go and mess it up by dropping a whole bunch of brown right across, you know, nine or ten layers that I just built up and washed down. That's the worst. Especially after you've washed it, because, you know, you may have the paint still viable on your wet palette, uh, which I highly recommend everybody use, but it's not the paint that's been washed. So you can paint over the area again, but then it's brighter because the wash is darkened the rest, and then it's splotchy. And then if you come back and just try to wash that area, now you've got, like, a wash line and the patch, and it makes it look worse. So, uh, yeah, if you have to touch up skin after it's been washed, I usually recommend that you, uh, you just take your wash and mix it in with a little bit of your skin tone, and I guess this goes for other things besides just skin, but you mix it in to try to get it to the, the right tone kind of the first time, so that you can just paint directly onto the model with that tone that the skin has kind of been washed down to. That's the only way I've found to really be able to match well 
uh, like paint areas I've already painted and washed. Uh, that's why I typically will do an entire, we'll say, base coat before I wash the first area so that I can cover up those areas that might get mistakes before I put the wash down. But sometimes, especially like with skin, after I've spent a lot of time layering it up and building it, I make it look nice, I kind of want to finish it and move on. So right now I've got a slightly darker brown that I'm painting the pre-metallics with. I just wanted to darken it a little bit more so that the, uh, the brass I'm inevitably going to put on there is kind of a little darker. And you know I should be doing a video soon so that you guys can see all these metal comparisons and the different kind of undercoats. They really make a big difference. If you've got the spare time, I'd really recommend painting two models side by side with different undertones on your metallics you can see for yourself. Um, I did have a visitor arrive. I didn't realize he snuck in the room while I was painting. Uh, that's my cat Gouda. Uh, he decided he needed to be on my t desk. And if any of you have cats and have tried to paint with them around, I'm sure you've run into the same problems. They just always need to be right where you are. And I've heard it's the same with kids, you know, young kids. I can't speak from experience, I don't have any. Um, but I have also heard that if you have young kids and you're trying to paint, you should get them a couple of models, even if they're just like army men from the dollar store, and let them quote unquote paint with you. Because then they're doing what you're doing, so they're really into it, and they won't bother you as much, and you can keep an eye on them because they're right at the table with you. Uh, just little parenting tips from a non-parent. So, uh, just, this model doesn't have a whole lot of extra stuff to it, it's mostly skin tone. So I've just covered the other bits that are going to be metallic, kind of, he's got this gauntlet on his right arm, and he's got some, I don't know, they're kind of like, best I would describe it in modern terms would be like support bands on his biceps. They're probably just like some kind of accent jewelry. Actually, I'll tell you what they are. They're to cover up the, uh, the separation point, because uh, both arms glued in at those points. So uh, they were actually probably sculpted into the model so that when they cut the arms off for casting, they wouldn't have to worry about it being a perfectly clean fit. But that's the meta reason. Uh, <laughs> now I'm just dry brushing the fur with a little bit of driftwood brown. This is a brighter brown. Um, I'm then going to wash the fur down so that it kind of gives that layered look. But I like to do the highlight first so that it can be, as I've said before, a more extreme highlight that then gets washed down into a less extreme look. I find that when you do it afterwards you end up getting stuck with a really bright highlight, probably brighter than you initially intended. And so I tend to do it before so that it... I'd rather err on the darker side than the lighter side, because if it's too bright, it is very noticeable. So now I am just taking Agrax Earthshade. This is straight out of the bottle and not thinned. Uh, I didn't worry about it pooling in the, the fur, because that gives it that extra depth. So I'm not worried about putting it on thick. It'll look good in the end. To any of those spots, especially up around the waist, that's kind of where the fur is going to be brightest, uh, because it folds over a little bit. Um, but definitely don't want to miss it. So, also getting his undercarriage. I probably should have just left it black, but was dumb and decided I'd pull it up and paint it uh, for continuity's sake, because so many people are going to be peering under the, uh, the giant's goods. And now that that wash is dry, I'm actually going to start applying a little bit of leather brown. He's got kind of this leather belt going around his waist, holding his kilt fur armor in place. And so I'm just touching that real quick, getting that belt. Uh, he also has some leather straps holding... I'm not sure what these are on the front. They kind of look like mini stalagmites. If I had to take a guess, they were some kind of thrown weapon. Like, uh, kind of a giant equivalent of like a throwing dagger, almost. Yeah, they're kind of unusual. They're just like big stone spikes, or they're big spikes of some kind. I. I decided they were stone for what I was painting, but 
very unusual pieces. Uh, so then he's got this leather strap in the back that holds his... Um, I am building this lighter leather brown up, technically, uh, from the uh, shield brown we put down before. And you can kind of see it's, it's helping to cover a lot better than it would over black. Um, and that's kind of the whole thing I try and emphasize by going through these multiple stepping up layers. Uh, it's just that when you do that, you tend to get better coverage. So now I'm just getting the uh, leather straps there that are covering kind of the, his dagger to thrown whatever. Uh, whatever you may decide to make them. Uh, it's your model, it's your world, your fantasy. Paint it as you see fit. Still just going to need two coats though. Yeah, you sometimes run into these problems with models where you don't know what the uh, the sculptor was thinking, so you can try and figure it out. You know, you can look at what other people have painted, but really, it's just kind of your best guess. So now I'm going in, and this is just straight ghost gray. I wanted them to be bright. If these are like sharpened weapons of some kind, or maybe they're... God, I don't even know. It, there's a lot they could be. And unless I somehow get the sculptor to watch this video and comment we'll probably never find out so tell me what you think they are uh, go ahead and comment below and we'll see if we can sort this out as a group uh, figure out exactly what they might be they kind of look like wooden stakes but like i don't know the size for giant vampires if those are a thing uh, i'm sure there's probably like you know giants that are infected with the vampire's curse but i've never encountered one uh, but I haven't seen everything. So just kind of cleaning that up a little bit. Um, now I'm just going to take a little bit of black wash. This is just known oil that's thin. Uh, the same stuff I did with the skin. And I'm just going to kind of put this down to dirty it up a little bit, getting those shadows, kind of make them look nice and dirty. I also just want to give them the depth that they deserve. I mean, it's been sculpted, so might as well do our best effort to make sure it's seen. And that's pretty much going to do it for today. Um, if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when additional videos come out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Until next time, happy painting!